LA program with uh, a good friend from high school, Kenny Smith, and then uh, two other friends that uh, were a year behind us. You know, they quit school to join the Marine Corps that summer with us. Uh, we ended up at Paris Island in the uh, beginning of August of 66. Uh, from Paris Island, we made it up to Camp Geiger at Lejeune. And at that point, uh, uh, we were learning a little bit about other units in the Marine Corps. I had a couple of uncles that were already in the Marine Corps and, and uh, career men. So I did have a little background on the unit. And uh, my goal was to try and to get into the Force Recon community. And uh, at that point, they come around and they do some interviewing and testing. But uh, the day I recall that they came, I had twisted a knee in one of one of our activities, and uh, didn't get through that. So evolution, uh, being a, a basic grunt. I was uh, on my way to uh, Vietnam, so I hit staging December December '66, and uh, did a couple of weeks and got ready to go overseas. Uh, at that point, there were still a lot of troop ships, and folks were going. Uh, by sea. Some were traveling in the air, but uh, my particular group uh, took a three-week ride out of San Diego and uh, pulled into Da Nang Harbor in, in January, toward the end of January of 67. And uh, my orders were to go to First Force, which uh, was a goal of mine. However, I didn't get into uh, stateside training and uh, showed up in Vietnam as a basic infantry person with no re reconnaissance background, uh, which many of us had at that point. There was uh, an abundance of need and not that many that were uh, stateside trained. Uh, so I got to Camp Reasoner in about the last week of January 67. And uh, our commanding officer was Major Laurie. And uh, he uh, assigned me to the 5th Platoon. I went down and I uh, was with uh, our, the Killer King group and stuff for a couple of days until I started my uh, RIP program, which was the indoctrination that uh, new folks into into the force company or first recon battalion uh, went through training and learned or were updated and uh, refreshed on map reading, uh, weapons, land mine, booby trap, uh, different types of little training, uh, but it was roughly seven days of indoctrination into the company. And at that point, I went from 5th platoon into the 1st platoon. And uh, great experience, all new folks, didn't know anybody at that point, and uh, found that here at Camp Reasoner, was uh, the odd numbers, the 1st, 3rd, and 5th platoons of 1st Force, along with uh, two letter companies from the battalion, uh, Bravo and Charlie. And the rest of the battalion and force were down in Chulaita compound. So uh, Alpha and Delta and the even numbers, 2, 4, and 6 from 1st uh, Force were down in Chulaita. And uh, we evolved. I ended up with uh, First Force, First Platoon, which at that time, the team name was uh, 
Groucho Marx. And uh, Groucho Marx was led by uh, Lieutenant Eric Barnes. And uh, my platoon sergeant was Norman Jennings. And uh, we uh, became uh, countersign and dogma roughly the beginning of February. A lot of the team names changed and uh, third platoon, which was my next hooches down from where we lived became, uh, they were hateful and uh, classmate. Fifth platoon had already been Killer Kane, but was now also Killer Kane and uh, Brisbane. So we had six teams that ran out of force. And uh, I was finally ready. And in February, ran my first patrol, which I ran with Team Countersign. And uh, the first platoon's leadership was tied up. And uh, Lieutenant Mike Henry took us out. And along on my first patrol was uh, Lieutenant Andy Finlayson, which was his second snap-in patrol before he took over, actually, Killer Kane. So we went on to the Angthu Slope and, uh, you know, being barely 18, wide-eyed, first patrol. Uh, it was a little different experience, and uh, we were dropped in the wrong place. Lieutenant Henry, you know, called a spot around, got us located, made sure we knew where we were. Uh, it was either the first or second night that uh, I had just gotten the watch and uh, Marine named Moore said, uh, you know, he just cupped his ear that he was hearing things and I was on the watch and kept hearing noises and uh, all of a sudden I, I woke up more and a couple of the guys and whatever it was seemed to like want to charge us and uh, the first thing I shot at was uh, I don't know and uh, I had the M79 with a flechette round and uh, if anybody could have saw my eyes in the middle of the night then uh, they were wide open, quite huge, but uh, that was my first patrol, and then we went on from there. Uh, throughout my first tour, I had uh, a lot of different uh, adventures, uh, whether it be firefights or just things in the jungle that irritate you, can hurt you, upset you, make you anxious. Uh, rotated, went home, spent a year or two at home, and uh, went back to Vietnam again January of 70, and fortunately got back into uh, First Force. We spent uh, January to August as First Force. At that point, we were running for three MAF. In the beginning, in my first tour, we were attached to the battalion, and we actually worked for division. So the second tour, uh, probably about March, we became uh, with the division again and ran as first force until August. The company stood down, and we became subunit one, First Force, and about 25 of us uh, stayed in country and went over to Camp Reasoner and lived with the battalion. Uh, I stayed till 71. First Force was gone. The last of us had dwindled in January, and uh, the battalion spent another month or six weeks running, and then they stood down and went home. Uh, that pretty much took me. I went home, spent a few months at Lejeune, and uh, 
after five years, got out of the Marine Corps and uh, became a civilian. Uh, that was my my quick five years in the military. Wow, uh, and it's uh, you've definitely got quite quite the resume, and uh, I mean there are uh, not only serving with uh, you know Colonel Finlinson and and all the Gunny Jennings and and all of those men, uh, the 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 four three column guys at that point in time. There, I mean you were serving amongst uh, legends in uh, not only the recon community, but the, the Marine Corps as a whole. Um, can you, uh, can, can w one thing I've, I've always been interested in is <clears throat> y'all in country, how y'all would do training. Um, it, when, when did you get your, uh, your jump wings. I, I know there, I think it, it had to do five for the, the Navy wings and then, or, or the silver wings. And then was it 10 to get the gold wings or how was y'all's training jump wise? At five jumps, you got your army wings. And then at 10, your Navy, your gold. Uh, in country, well, a lot of the guys, if they were state stateside trained, went to Fort Benning and jump with the army. Uh, in country, uh, we sent people to the, the Okinawa and, uh, periodically we would have classes and availability and billets to go to, uh, Okinawa and, uh, April, April 67, we sent Oh, uh, without, I don't know the exact number, 20, 30 guys. Uh, you'll run an in-country pre-jump, junior jump, which is a lot of, a lot of PT learning to do some PLS and, uh, they'll, they'll select enough to fill the billets. And at that point, April 67, three of my guys, uh, Mike Pistorino, Pee Wee Palmer, and uh, Jim Hawkshurst. The three of them out of my group, my platoon, went to that class. And uh, Lieutenant Torres was uh, the officer in charge. And uh, I think Doc Laporte was in that class. Uh, John Slowick out of uh, Andy's group was in that class. Uh, but uh, they did a week or two of the pre-jump, and then they went to Okinawa roughly three weeks. So the guys were gone out of running patrols maybe about five or six weeks. And uh, we got those guys back probably mid-May.